ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have entered the tank meta on this channel. Der Kampfpanzer Le Le Leopard 2 Technik Bundeswehr. Now you guys shared this as something to react to in my last video um, where I discussed tanks. I guess not my last video, but the video before that. And you guys were like, yo, you should check this out. This came directly from the Bundeswehr page. So we're gonna be reacting to uh, the Leopard 2 tank, the technical aspects of it, and um, or the technology, and uh, go from there. Subscribe. Der Leopard 2 ist ein Kampfpanzer des Heeres aus deutscher Produktion, der 1979 in Dienst gestellt wurde. The inside of tanks looks very interesting to me. It seems very complicated to operate. It seems very uh, taxing. And I, oh man. Er wird ständig neuen Anforderungen angepasst. Die aktuellste Variante des Leopard 2 heißt A7V, wobei das V. A7V. Wow. Wie verbessert steht. Insgesamt hat sich der Leopard 2 als einer der fortschrittlichsten und zuverlässigsten Panzer der Welt erwiesen und bleibt eine wichtige Waffe in den Armee. You know, it started to make a lot of sense to me. So there was a video that I watched uh, two videos ago and it was talking about how uh, Germany lent tanks to Turkey and Turkey complained that the Leopard 2 tanks were not effective. But they essentially were being very not smart with their usage of the Leopard 2 tanks. They, they basically had the absolute worst strategy and wound up leaving the tanks completely exposed. And the tanks were under fire from every direction and got totally destroyed. And they're like, well, these tanks aren't, aren't as good as you said they are. Germany responded with, actually, they are. You guys just don't have good strategies to use them. Strategy is the key. It is the key. So, um, yeah, the tanks themselves are beautiful. In fact, we actually watched the previous video uh, about the tank stuff that we checked out. Um, the equilibrium on this thing is ridiculous. The balancing of the tank, bruh. Even over terrain, the tank has a steady, like, stable, like, a... Uh, it can balance a mug of beer on the top of the barrel. That is, that's insane. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen anything showcased like that in my life. My jaw almost touched the ground. Mean viele Nationen. Was sind besondere Merkmale des Kampanzers Leopard 2 A7V? So what are other Merkmala, I don't know what Merkmala is, that uh, tanks, some, so what else can like the uh, Lep, the Leopard 2s, what, like what else can they do basically? I'm not sure if that's what that translates to, but you guys can let me know in the comments down below. Or what's behind them. Im Wesentlichen besitzt der Panzer drei besondere Merkmale. Waffen stabile, oh, this is what we're talking about, weapon st stabilization. The weapon stabilization is so perfect. You could put a beer mug on the top of the barrel and it won't go anywhere. It won't budge. It won't spill a single drop of beer as we saw in the last video. Erstens Waffenstabilisierung. Diese Fähigkeit That's the video. That's what we we're just talking about. That's the video. That's the video. Look at me looking all proud. Look, that's the video. That's beautiful, man. Now, for a lot of you guys are like, James has become a patriot channel. He's he's so American. I'm in the US military, my guy. What did you expect? And no, it's not a patriotic channel, man. I'm just diving into different elements of Europe, specifically Germany right now, until, you know, I decide to cover another country. But this is cool. You can't deny that. Also, another thing that somebody mentioned was the emissions that the tanks put out in the environment. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. If we've gotten to the point that we're, look, that we're using tanks, the last thing I care about is emissions. Now I know that made all of you guys upset. That's fine. Weapons were not created to be environmentally friendly. They're created to eliminate other threats. Okay, and that's why it's 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 better to use them as little as possible. You know what I mean? So if there is something that is created that would be effective, you know, cool. But, you know, 
it would behoove everyone to limit the use of said weapons. Because no matter how you spin it, they're all deadly in some way, shape, or form to the environment. Some more than others. Nuclear weapons, obviously, incredibly damaging to the environment. Notice that we don't use them. Because there's this whole thing of mutually assured destruction. That's a thing, bro. That's a thing. So for the people that were complaining about the emissions that I should be concerned about, I'm not. I am not. Like, I'm concerned about people being protected, people being defended, and people having the ability to defend themselves. There are countries out there that literally cannot defend themselves. And that sucks. So, you know, having a little something, something to help you out a little bit when you need or to, to lend someone else help when they are defenseless is a good thing, you know, because, I mean, it'd be great if, if everything was peace, love and penguins, but it's not. It's not. That's the whole history of the world. It is a very dark and cruel reality that we live in. Imagine there is a neighboring country that you're very close with or that you know of. Maybe you're not close with them, but you don't have any beef with them. And all of a sudden they're getting terrorized by another country that has weapons. They don't have weapons, but you do. Now, this conflict, it's not really your problem, but it kind of is because you know that that person is they haven't done anything to you to to be like you know vicious they haven't done anything to anybody else to be vicious i mean why not lend them a hand give them a, a fighting chance to defend themselves that's what it's all about so no malintent was made to to you know when i when i created those videos and stuff like that just giving my my two cents on what i saw but i did see a lot of very heated people so for those very heated people take your undies unbunch them and smile more wurde bereits in früheren Versionen eingeführt und immer weiterentwickelt. Mm. Die Kanone und der Turm sind stabilisiert. So bleibt die Waffenanlage unter allen äußeren Bedingungen auf das Ziel gerichtet. Damit ist die Trefferwahrscheinlichkeit beim ersten Schuss verbessert. Mm. Zweitens, separate Stromversorgung. Okay. Der Leopard 2A7V verfügt über ein Ex- I did not know that. That's actually super cool. They might have mentioned this, but I did not. I I, I didn't emphasize the importance of the uh, external power generator. That's pretty cool. But isn't that also a weakness? The external power generator. Maybe it's it's, it's explaining it. Zeugungsaggregat mit mehreren Betriebsstufen. Damit wird der Panzer beispielsweise auch ohne laufenden Motor vollständig cool. elektrisch versorgt, okay. ohne die Batterien zu belasten. So this actually conserves a lot of power. That's pretty cool. So there's not, there's multiple sources of power on this tank. Clever. So bleibt der Panzer länger gefechtsbereit. That's cool. Drittens Klimatisierung. Die Klimatisation. Neue Version des Panzers ist. The new version is of the tank is air conditioned. Dude, that's something I didn't even think about. I, for some reason, my default setting in my brain was that the tanks were like, they had to be conditioned, you know, because they're firing off all these different artillery artillery rounds. I thought that like automatically air conditioning was a factor inside the design of a tank. But that's actually not a factor <laughs> in a lot of a lot of cases. Right. The K, like, like I said, when I when I went on that rant earlier in this video, the objective is to eliminate threats, not to provide comfort for the user, which I feel like both should go hand in hand a, a little bit. <laughs> Makes it easier to eliminate threats when like you're in a in, in an environment that's not detrimental to uh, your own body while you're operating said piece of equipment. Um, for instance, the tank getting too hot and you're inside of the tank and you're like, oof, I, uh, I gotta get out of here. You're basically operating a, a moving oven, you know? But this is cool. Klimatisiert. Nicht ganz so, wie wir es aus einem normalen PKW kennen. Aber es macht den Einsatz der Soldatinnen und Soldaten etwas erträglicher. That's good. That's good. I can't tell you how many times um, I've seen, and I've, I've experienced uh, some of this, right? So um, I've been in a Humvee, several Humvees before, doing patrols and whatnot. Um, and uh, they're uncomfortable. They are uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, man. I, that is... 
the most uncomfortable experience I've ever felt in my life as far as riding in a vehicle. You feel every bump on the road. It's horrible for your back. Uh, the spacing between the seats is terrible as well. My knees were crushed and whatnot. It was just not a good experience. So I can only imagine what it's like, you know, sitting in a literal like bathtub, a metal bathtub that's small, you know, and cramped up. No heat, I mean, well, not no heat, but no air conditioning that's incredibly hot and you have to like locate the enemy and bro, that's that's stressful while trying to avoid getting like annihilated your communication skills have to be on point it's just bro this is that's intense über welche bewaffnung über welche bewaffnung verfügt verfügt der lepe 2 so let me say that again because that that pronunciation was terrible. Also, me having these headphones on is messing up. Mein Aussprache. I can't hear myself. Über welche Bewaffnung verwirkt der Leopard 2? Die Hauptwaffe ist eine 120 mm Glattrohrkanone, Ooh. die speziell für den Einsatz im Leopard 2 entwickelt wurde. Mit einer Feuerleit- und Zielanlage. With a fire control and targeting system. That's crazy. Ooh. Die Kanone besitzt einen Schwenkbereich von 360. So it can swivel 360 degrees. I, I did notice that. And some tanks can't, man. Some tanks are fixated. This one can move around 360 degrees. That's scary, man. 60 Grad und einen Höhenrichtbereich von minus 9 Grad bis plus 20 Grad. Good, Neben der Hauptwaffe Google. hat der Kampfpanzer zwei Maschinengewehre und eine Mehrfachwurfanlage, um Nebelwurfkörper und Spreng- oder nicht tödliche oh Munition zu verschießen. What? Is this flare? Or like just... Looks like a shot off of flare. Welche Munition verschießt? Ja, verschießt der Leopard 2... A7V mit der Hauptwaffe. So, what kind of munition is used in the Leopard 2 A7V with the main weapon, I guess? Die modernste Version des Leopard 2 A7V nutzt zwei verschiedene Munitionsarten. Oh, so two, two different types of uh, two, two, I can't talk. Two different types of munition. Die erste Munitionsart ist das KE-Geschoss gegen Obviously Panzer. The KE steht für kinetische Energie. Es handelt Munitions. sich um ein Wuchtgeschoss. Oof. Dabei hängt die Wirkung des Geschosses nur von der kinetischen Energie ab, also von der Wechselwirkung von Masse, Geschwindigkeit und Beschleunigung. Oof. Es lässt sich in etwa mit einer Kanonenkugel auf See vergleichen, die andere Schiffe versenkt, indem sie sie einfach durch. Oh, so I guess literally a lot of like inertia and the element of physics affects how much damage these uh these bits of ammunition do to their intended target if they go fast enough they can do a lot of damage but if there isn't a lot of distance between the target and there is you know there's not enough time for like to pick up on the speed and whatever it's probably not going to do too much you know i mean not to say it's not going to do any damage but it won't do as much Licked. Beim KE-Geschoss auf Panzer ist die Wirkung verheerend. Oh, it's devastating. Never mind. I said it's devastating. Oof. Yikes, boy, it took off the whole back half of that other tank. Wird ein feindlicher Panzer getroffen, wirkt die gesamte Energie des Geschosses erstmal auf eine winzige Stelle. Oh my gosh. Da das Material des Geschosses härter als das des Panzers ist, kann es die Panzerwand durchdringen. Die Splitter breiten sich explosionsart. Bro, so the projectile hits a specific point in the tank, enough to where it's able to go straight through. I mean, hence it being an anti-tank munition. It goes through the tank into the innards of the tank and then boom, explodes. Crazy. That's that's nuts. That is actually nuts. Oh my gosh. It's terrifying. Die zweite Munitionsart ist das High Explosive Geschoss. Well, obviously that one's going to be very, very effective. It's a, if it's highly explosive, that makes sense. Es handelt sich um ein Sprenggeschoss. Es wird vor allem gegen leicht befestigte Stellungen oder gegen leicht und mittelgepanzerte Fahrzeuge Ooh. eingesetzt. 
Bei dieser zweiten Munitionsart verbirgt sich im Gefechtskopf eine Sprengladung, die mit einer Kombination aus Kontakt und Zeitzünde auslöst. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So kann der Detonationspunkt wie folgt genau festgelegt werden. Im Ziel. Der Kontakt löst die Sprengung aus. So the contact triggers the explosion. Nach dem Durchdringen einer Befestigung. Die Sprengung löst nach dem Kontakt nach einer vordefinierten Dauer aus. Oh. Und über dem Ziel. Die Sprengung löst ohne Kontakt. So, it's, it's like a timed explosion if it doesn't make direct contact. So it can kind of glaze by the target and then have a proximity kind of like thing go on. But it's on a timer. Takt über dem Ziel zeitgesteuert aus. Oof. Welche Besatzung hat der Leopard 2? Was bedeutet Besatzung? Welche Besatzung hat der Leopard 2? Heute wie damals blieb die Anzahl von vier Besatzungsmitgliedern unverändert. Der Kommandant, er ist für den Panzer und die Besatzung verantwortlich. Oh, wow. Er gibt unter anderem Anweisungen an den Fahrer, führt den Funkverkehr und wählt. Oh, so this is like the like the uh, the structure of who operates in the tank in general, which is also pretty interesting because I'm telling you to be a part of a tank crew, your communication has to be sharp. Die zu verwendende Munitionsart. Der Richtschütze er hat einen 360 Grad Rundumblick und führt den Feuerkampf nach Anweisung des Kommandanten. In einer Duellsituation bekämpft er den Feind ohne vorherige Absprache, da zählt jede Sekunde. Der Ladeschütze. Er lädt die Bordkanone mit den 120 mm Patronen nach. Oh my gosh. Und der Fahrer. Auf der Straße fährt der Fahrer über Luke. Im Gelände und unter Gefechtsbedingungen ist die Luke geschlossen, dann helfen ihm Winkelspiegel bei der Orientierung. Was ist der Unterschied zwischen dem Leopard 2 und Leopard 1? So what's is the what's the difference between the Leopard 2 and the Leopard 1? Der Leopard 1 war zwischen 1965 und 2003 in, oh. in den Versionen A1 bis A5 in der Bundeswehr im Einsatz. That's cool. Seine 105 mm Kanone ist 15 mm kleiner als die seines Nachfolgers. Only 15 mm smaller. That's not much of a difference. Er ist grob ein Drittel leichter als der Leopard 2. Oh, it's lighter than Leopard 2 too. 830 PS gegenüber 1500 PS hat der Leopard 1 zwar viel weniger Oh, so it's, a, it's basically a weaker vehicle. That's what it is. The Leopard 1 was a weaker vehicle, smaller, um, obviously less effective and what not. ist aber mit 65 Stundenkilometer fast so schnell wie sein großer Bruder. Oh wow. Mit entsprechender Zusatzausrüstung können beide Leopards Gewässer bis zu 4 Meter Tiefe durchqueren. They can cross waters up to 4 meters deep. Four meters deep is deep, bro. I did not know that tanks could go in the water effectively. They're like little submarines. Yeah. What? That is intense. That is intense. My mind is officially blown. I know a lot of y'all are like, James, what is you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm learning. I'll see you soon. Catch me live on twitch.tv slash James Bray Gang. I love you guys. Thanks for riding it out with me. Hopefully, eventually, one of these days, we hit 500K. <laughs> Looks like we've been stalled a little bit, guys. But um, I'll continue pumping out content. And uh, we'll, we'll get right back on track. Love you guys.